The Picky Prince. Once upon a time, there was a prince who wanted to marry a princess, but he didn't want just any old princess. He wanted a real one. Hello, everyone. This is The Princess and the Pea, a story from Hans Christian Andersen. This is Prince Cordelia, your highness. Not one of the local princesses would do. What's the matter with them, Patrick? cried his father, the king. I'm running out of princesses to show you. Are they too old, too tall, too hairy? I can't be sure they're real, sighed Prince Patrick. I'll have to find one for myself. You must do whatever you want, darling, said the queen, who spoiled him rotten. Nothing but the best for my princey wincy, mother. The next day, Prince Patrick set out to travel the world in search of a real princess. Ready, Freddy? I think my arm's stuck. He took with him 12 suitcases, 10 pairs of shoes, a spare crown, and his cousin Fred. Goodbye, my love, cried the queen, wiping away a tear with her silk handkerchief. Don't forget to wrap up warm and brush your teeth. I'll be fine. Stop fussing. They hadn't gone far when they heard a loud sneeze from under the seat. Who's there, shouted the prince. A small figure crept out. It's Peg. Aren't you the palace maid, said Prince Patrick. Peg nodded. Well, what are you doing here, the prince asked. I want to see the world, said Peg. I've been at the palace all my life, ever since I was left on the doorstep as a baby. I want an adventure. She blushed. And Cook's furious because I burned the pudding, she added. Well, you can't come with us, said Fred. This is a boy's only adventure. You'll get scared and want to go home. No, I won't. I'm just as brave as you. We're not turning back now, said Prince Patrick. She'll have to join us. Peg grinned at Fred. Okay, Prince Patrick went on. First stop, the Wicked Witch's Hut. Fred looked alarmed. You are joking. She'll eat us alive. Who's scared now? Prince Patrick shook his head. The witch will know how to find a real princess. She's my best hope. Chapter two, off to see the witch. Now, Peg, said Prince Patrick, this could be dangerous. You stay in the coach. Fred and I will meet the witch. The prince knocked three times on the witch's door. There was no answer. Why couldn't I stay in the coach? Looks like no one's in. We'll have to go, said Fred, who is already backing away. I think Fred is scared of the witch. She must be in, said the prince, and he bent down to peer through the keyhole. Ah! A large green eye was staring at him. Prince Patrick jumped back and landed bottom first in a patch of mud. A short plump woman opened the door, chuckling to herself. Did I scare you? I was just checking who you were. You can't be too careful these days. Look at this mud. Fred was amazed. Are you the witch, she asked. You're not scary at all. The witch looked rather upset. I try my best, she sighed. I grew three new warts last week. Come inside, she added. I'm just cooking some tasty soup for lunch. Something really smells, something really smells in here. I think it's the soup. We're not hungry, said Prince Patrick quickly. I've come to ask for your help. I want to know how to find a real princess. Real princesses are very rare, said the witch, and it's hard to spot a fake one, but there is a test you can do. Let me see. A real princess must have boiled brains, rotten beans, and cat spit. What? cried the prince. Oh, sorry, that's a recipe for soup. This is it. The real princess test. A real princess must possess politeness to one and all, kindness to rich and poor, very sensitive skin. Sensitive skin, Prince Patrick asked, looking confused. A real princess, explained the witch, has such tender skin that she could feel a pea under 20 mattresses. Thank you, said the prince. You've been very helpful. He turned to the door. 
Oh, do stay for lunch, pleaded the witch. My soup's almost ready. No, really. I insist, and bring in that poor girl from outside. Ah, uh, I can't eat that. I think the witch makes terrible soup. They were stuck in the witch's hut until the cauldron was empty. I feel sick, groaned Peg on the way back to the coach. Well, you shouldn't have had three bowls then, said Fred. I poured mine into a plant pot. I was being polite. I didn't want to hurt the witch's feelings. That was very kind of you, Peg, said Prince Patrick, smiling at her. Where are we going now, asked Fred. Now I have the witch's test. I can finally find a real princess, said the prince. We're off to meet Prince Prunella. Check the map, Fred. Princess map. Princess Primrose, Princess Parlova, Princess Prunella, which is where they're going, and Princess Prudence. Chapter three, Princess Prunella. Princess Prunella was very excited to see the prince. You must come and stay in my castle, she cried. She raced over the bridge, dragging Prince Patrick with her. Hurry, hurry, she called to her servants. He's perfect. We'll be married in no time. I want you to prepare the best bedchambers for the prince and Fred. Excuse me, said Peg, struggling with all the luggage. Where am I to sleep? Who are you? I'm a maid. Maids belong in the attic, replied the princess haughtily. There might be a few mice there, but I'm sure you'll cope. Pig went to her room. It was cold and damp. She could hear mice scuttling about, squeaking. The prince can't marry her. Meanwhile, Fred and the prince were in the grand dining room with Princess Prunella. So Peg has a terrible place to sleep, but the prince has a wonderful place to sleep. You're being very kind, said Prince Patrick, but what about Peg? Is she eating in the kitchen? The princess looked shocked. Your beastly little maid? You can't expect me to bother with her. She can eat the pig slops if she's hungry. I'm afraid we must leave, said Prince Patrick. You're not a real princess after all. Oh, yes, I am, cried Princess Prunella. Oh, no, you're not, shouted Fred. You failed the first real princess test. Rats. Real princesses are polite to everyone, explained Prince Patrick, and you've just been rude to Peg. Chapter four, Princess Pavlova. I won't give up, said Prince Patrick. There must be a real princess somewhere. According to this map, there's a Princess Pavlova next door. Let's try her, Fred suggested. Princess Pavlova greeted them all very politely. What a pleasure to have you here, she said. Welcome to my castle. Thank you, your highness. She's passed the politeness tests, thought the prince. Now, what's the next one? Hmm, I have an idea. Fred, he cried, I have a plan. I'm going to dress up as a beggar and see if Princess Pavlova is kind to me. Try out your disguise on Peg first, said Craig, said Fred, to make sure it works. Princess Patrick found Peg sitting on a tree stump about to eat an apple. I'm a hungry beggar. Have you any food for me? Oh, you poor thing, Peg cried when she saw him. Here, have my apple. So Peg is nice to the beggar. Prince Patrick was very pleased with himself. Excellent, it works, he shouted, throwing off his disguise. It's you. What are you doing, asked Peg but the prince was already knocking on the castle door to try the test on Princess Pavlova. A servant answered, is someone there called Princess Pavlova? It's a beggar, your highness. We've got nothing for him, snapped the princess. Tell him to go away, and he smells. Prince Patrick turned away. She's not a real princess, he thought. A real princess is both polite and kind, even to beggars. Chapter five, a real princess. I'll never be married. I give up, said the prince with a sigh. I don't think there's a real princess anywhere. We may as well go home. They got ready for the long journey back to the palace. Everyone was glum, even the horses. I bet Cook hasn't forgotten about the pudding I burned. 
The coach arrived at the palace just in time. A huge storm was brewing. Pig was sent straight to the kitchen in disgrace. You've got hundreds of dishes to wash, scolded the cook. They've been piling up since you've left. Prince Patrick and Fred went to find the king and queen. Outside, Ran began beating against the windows. Streaks of lightning lit up the sky. Just then, there was a knock on the door. There is a Princess Primrose to see you, your highness, said the footman. Not another one. A beautiful princess stepped into the room. She was wet from the rain and shaking with cold. I'm so sorry to trouble you, she said politely, but my coach has broken down. No trouble at all, said Prince Patrick quickly. Why don't you stay the night at our castle? We'll fix your coach in the morning. Thank you, I must give you something in return. She acts like a real princess, thought the prince, but I must be sure. The third test, very sensitive skin. He asked the servants to prepare Princess Primrose's bedroom. I want 20 mattresses on the bed, ordered Prince Patrick, and a pea at the very bottom. Here's your bed, your highness. It's rather high. Peg didn't get to bed that night. She had to finish washing the dishes. Peg has a lot of work to do. The next morning, Princess Primrose came down for breakfast, looking refreshed. How did you sleep? asked Prince Patrick. I slept like a baby. I loved all those mattresses, the princess said. It was the most comfortable bed. Prince Patrick sighed. <sighs> a real princess would have felt that pee, he thought. He waved goodbye to Princess Primrose as soon as breakfast was over. Another fake one. She's not good enough for my Patrick. It was Peg's job to clean the princess's bedroom. Slowly, she climbed up the ladder, yawning with each step. I'll just lie down for a moment, Peg thought, before I start cleaning up. In no time at all, she was fast asleep. An hour later, Peg woke with a start. Ow, she said. There's something really lumpy in this bed. I'm getting down. Oh, it's way too long. But as, but as she leaned over, she knocked the ladder. It clattered to the ground. Drat. Peg cried, I'm stuck. Help, she shouted as loudly as she could. I'm stuck, please help. Everyone rushed into the bedroom. What are you doing up there? Prince Patrick called. I was supposed to be cleaning, said Peg, but I was so tired I fell asleep. And there's something horribly hard in this bed, she added. I'm covered in bruises. This can only mean one thing. I can't believe it, cried the prince. You were polite to the witch kind to a beggar, and now you've felt a pee under 20 mattresses. You must be a real princess. He raced up the ladder. Peg, will you marry me? Peg gasped. You want to marry me, a palace maid? Yes, please. A maid, but a princess at heart. Three cheers for Princess Peg, shouted Fred, and, and everyone cheered. So Prince Patrick finally married his real princess. He put the pea in a glass case in the palace museum for everyone to see. It may still be there today. Okay, so that's the princess and the pea. Um, this is a very famous book. Uh, I hope you liked it. I really like it. And um, you can borrow it from my library. I'll see you all next time.